Welcome to Invista Experts on Demand, your unbiased, informative source for supply chain and IT best practices and industry updates. Today we're talking with Stephen Craig, Managing Partner at Invista, on the topic of transportation assessments and solution design. What is the difference between a transportation assessment and a solution design? The transportation assessment or solution design is often the first step in many of the projects that we do. Things that can end up being um, focused on integration or technology or process or you know, many different things would start with an assessment or a solution design. And it's really a, an attempt to make sure you understand the nature of the problem and you know, how best to create value for the clients. The solution design goes to a lower level of depth on the future state and how we would get to the savings. And it's really a question of what, what does the client need. Um, oftentimes a, you can come in at an assessment level, quickly uh, get an answer out that has a high level future state and, uh, and then that will work for a business case and a decision. Sometimes you need to go a little bit deeper and that's, when we, you know, that's what we would call a solution design. That's really helpful, thank you. So who should be considering these opportunities and what are they really looking for? The short answer is anyone, but um, really one of the important things to catch is that it's not a question of spend, you know, large or small, and it's really not a question of industry. Interest in this or the need to do this really is generated by you know, a short-term need for tactical transportation savings, which most companies have, but more broadly the need to understand that in the strategic context, uh, which could be process design, you know, could be technology, could be integration issues, could be organizational design. So when you've exhausted the ability to go get short-term tactical cash out of transportation and you need to look at how to get that cash in the context of broader change, this type of an assessment or solution design is often needed. In part because we need to look you know, outside of the transportation organization, certainly within it for, for tactical savings, but outside of the organization to understand you know, what's causing the issues. The symptom of many supply chain problems is actually found in the transportation budget. So the problem may be a transportation spend number going the wrong direction, but that may only be the symptom of a larger problem. So what do you do? What kind of deliverables can a shipper expect from a project like this? The deliverable set and structure has been very similar across those 20 years, but the content is different from client to client because the, you know, the answers are different from client to client. When we come in externally, and when we, really any third party is going to come in externally, there's a series of stakeholder interviews that need to be done, frankly, just to make sure you're focusing on the right problem. If someone's doing one of these internally, they should have that done themselves. But the first real deliverable that is content rich uh, beyond the stakeholder reviews is what we call a spend diagram. It's a one page graphic description of the transportation spend and you know, what's going on with, with the transportation spend. And, and frankly, any director should be able to have the one page picture that shows what they do. Uh, humorously, I've had some directors in the past who are uh, highly referenceable and they joke with me that the most valuable thing that we, we taught them was how to, how to build a one page spend diagram so they could always show what, what, they, what they do. But the important part about the spend diagram isn't just the deliverable. It's that to create that deliverable, you have to really understand where the money is and where it's going and for what the moves are. And then that generates discussions around the business that's driving the need for those moves. So the deliverable is the, is the spend diagram, but the real insight, the important piece is the insight that's generated in putting that together because we're consultants, we think about where the money is, and if you've got a spend area that has bad process or you know, a lot, of, lot, lot that's going wrong, but it doesn't have substantial cash, that's not where you spend your effort. So um, it's really important to make sure you've got a, a, a good understanding of the cash. And it's surprising, most companies don't. Um, most companies really don't know how much they spend on transportation, certainly across the breadth of the company, maybe within you know, inbound or outbound or regionally inbound and outbound, certainly for the global companies. But surprisingly enough, most companies don't know how much they spend on transportation. And the first step is always to understand where the money is and what it's being used for. You mentioned process. Is that the next step in this scenario? Absolutely. You know, when you do process flow uh, documentation, you can do the two-hour version, the two-day version, the two-week version. You do need to make sure that you have a, a documented understanding of what the, you know, what the processes are. It needs to be swim lane driven so that you understand who the roles and actors are. And you know, it will be wrong when your pen comes off the paper, but the only way to really understand um, you know, how the process work is to document it. So the next step in a solution design is absolutely to, the, the quotes are to staple yourself to an order, or or at Invista, what we like to call the three actuals, uh, to observe the real work done by real people in the real locations. And one of the important things to understand about process documentation like this is that 
you, there's definitely a, a, a whiteboard component where people come in and tell you, but nobody's really ever perfectly right about that. And it's not because they're not trying to be, it's just that you know, there's a little bit of, of wanting to tell you what the process should be, but not necessarily what the process is. And then frankly, in many organizations, people don't know what the upstream or downstream process is, and that's one of the, one of the issues that comes out. So, you know, absolutely, the, stapling yourself to the order, three actuals, walking through the, the process end to end, you know, creating a swim lane focused um, process diagram at an acceptable level of, of um, detail. And I strongly encourage folks not to let it go more than a couple of weeks. Uh, calendar time, and it's a few days of, of work doing them over a couple of weeks with review, is the best place to start to understand, um, uh, you know, understand the processes. Now, when you take the, the, the first deliverable, the spend diagram, that understands where the money is, and you add the process documentation, it sounds kind of simple, but it becomes you know, a Venn diagram where you, you lay those two together, and where there's process weakness and where there's money is an area you're going to go after for opportunity. And process weakness, there's certainly some experience in understanding what that is and, and needing to know what technologies are available. You'll see decisions that are made by somebody rather than a tool if there's a large data set or you see handoffs uh, between one organization in the, in the company and the next that are at different points in the process. You see planning that's made without appropriate information. So it's really not that hard, you know, with, with certainly with some experience, to, to look at a process design and understand where there's potential weakness. This is really helpful, Stephen. So who should be sitting at the table to develop this process documentation? During the documentation of the current state, the people involved, really the folks who are, who are running the pro process. So um, oftentimes, you know, our direct client sponsor or project manager might be the director or the, the manager of the, the function. And they're going to be involved with the actual doers. But that changes when you start headed into the, the next piece. And it, and it does, in the next piece or two, does get to be a you know, resource constraint on the client prospects. So we need to make sure that that's scheduled. After the current state um, documentation, you really break into one of two areas. And one is some point solution analysis on the savings opportunities. Now, that analysis could be what we call top down or it could be bottom up, depending on the requirements of the client. Bottom up, a lot of modeling, which is expensive. It's more expensive than top down, but um, you, know, you need to be careful about how, what, what's done there. And many clients can get a very good answer with a top-down um, analysis. We like to say you have to be careful about letting precision be the enemy of accuracy. We need an accurate answer, not necessarily a, a, a deeply precise one at this point. With those savings estimates, you started heading into how can they be achieved, and that's really when you move from current state process mapping into future state process mapping. When you move into future state process mapping is when you really do need client personnel involved who can understand what the implications are on the rest of the business. So that, that ends up being moving upstream a little bit where we're still working you know, typically with a manager or director. But at some points in the future state process design, you know, it often needs to be vetted and validated by people um, more broadly in the company because you can't have the transportation folks you know, designing a new merchandising process so that we can fix an inbound um, uh, data gap without involving, for example, the merchandising folks. And same, th same thing on some of the outbound solutions. Great information. So summarize for me, how does this all get pulled together? That's an you know, important question because where this all needs to get pulled together is in the business case for change. And I say business case for change intentionally because it's not just putting together a business case that has some numbers on it, but really identifying you know, where do you go next? What are the steps that have to be taken? And really when you step through you know, stakeholder interviews, identification of requirements for the executives, spend diagram, current state processes, some point solution analysis or modeling if needed, future state and process design, uh, you start heading into a very clear understanding of what needs to happen. Now again, that can be very different from one client to another. You know, it can include some short-term sourcing to generate cash. It, can, it could be that uh, there's an integration problem and transportation decisions can't be made without the proper information. It could be that there's a technology problem that needs to be a, a selection process that would be kicked off. It's often the case that we can make better use of existing technology, which often has a high ROI. So it really boils down to that business case for change. And that needs to include not only the, you know, the savings that have been identified, um, but also you know, the cost, or at least a high level estimate of the cost to get there, timelines and uh, personnel requirements, 
Um, and, and it's really that last piece that, that should become the document that um, the project sponsors are working with the executives to get you know, buy-in on a movement uh, to really move the company. Now, an important part of this is that that's not a document that we want to hand over um, you know, at the end, kind of oppositionally with a sponsor. You know, here, here's, here's how much money you could, you could go save. And, and I think it's fair to say that there are a lot of transportation folks who, who sometimes get worried about that because they're worried about an external party coming in and making wild claims about uh, savings analysis that they then have to be held to that number. And, and you know, that's not our objective and it shouldn't be the objective of any, anybody that's doing these themselves. You really want to make sure that this is a, 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 a path forward that everyone agrees with that can go to the, the business owner and, um, you know, and, and, and have some, some real near-term achievable um, milestones. Thank you, Stephen, and thanks for joining us on Invista Experts on Demand.